This is Sports Matters with Jerry Collin. Jerry Collin. It's so retro. We cover all the biggest sports on the planet. MMA, boxing, snooker, football, darts. You name it and we cover it. Check out all the latest interviews with Jerry and the Stairs weekly on Sports Matters. Okay, so one of the sports matters for me, Jerry Calling. I'm joined by one of Ireland's snooker greats, Fergal O'Brien. Fergal, how's things with you? Very well, Jerry. Thank you very much. Good stuff. And I know you're back from Germany. I think you spent um, the weekend in Germany playing. Was it the Paul Hunter Classic? That's right, yeah. One of the minor ranking events. Um, I won my first match, but I lost in the second round, 4-3. So go away. Um, this week now, qualifiers in Barnsley for uh, the Shanghai. So please go to qualify for that. Good stuff. And what way is your form being at the moment, for good? Because I know you're, 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 you know, you're always in great games. So is the form there at the moment? Are you playing well? Yeah, happy enough. Um, obviously, this season, I've, I think I've played... You know, eight matches, one four, lost four. So, obviously, I'd like to be doing a little bit better than that. But you know, I've been practicing hard. Um, probably as of yet, really haven't had the results. Maybe the, the for the work I've put in. But you know, it's all hopefully it's in the bank, and hopefully I'll be depositing soon enough. <laughs> and you're still enjoying the game. You're playing a game a fairly long time. Uh, you'd be one of the key figures in Ireland alongside Ken Doherty. But you're still loving the game, no doubt. Yeah, absolutely. You now, love it. This is 26 years of professional. Um, so still, still loving it. Still feel I'm improving. Still feel I can improve. Still learning. So, um, as I said to somebody yesterday, you know, when I'm dead, I'll stop playing. Until then, it's up for grabs. <laughs> it is indeed. And uh, there's one thing I have to talk about because I know you're a, a big fan of the snooker legends events that happen in Goffs in Ireland. Um, you're going to be the captain of Team Ireland this year, and of course, both events they happen on January 7th and January 8th. Tell us first of all what it's like to be part of, you know, Ireland versus England, and of course, the feel is incredible with yourself and Ken, Joe, and of course, um, Mark Allen, and of course, Ronnie O'Sullivan's there, Jimmy White. This year we've got Mark Selby. Uh, tell us first of all what that means to you, because it's a great tournament, and I know Jason Francis uh, always tells me you're a massive fan and admirer of this tournament. Yeah, absolutely. This is going to be the third year at uh, health. Um, and obviously, well, firstly, the main attraction for me was that was to be able to play in golf because obviously I played there before in the 90s, back in uh, the good old days when tobacco sponsorship was allowed. And anybody that's ever been to been to golf knows what a fantastic venue it is. And only only last week I was talking to Ronnie Sullivan and Jimmy White, and they just couldn't get their head around the fact that you know we don't have a, a, a you know even in a ranking event um, in golf. But as I said, we do have the Legends events. This is the third year. So going back a few years, Ken had given me word that it was going to take place. So I actually rang Jason Francis and myself and basically uh, made a pitch made a pitch for a place on the team. Um, <laughs> this, is, this, is everything I, this is everything I'd ever done. And also said I'd do whatever I could to try and help promote it and sell tickets or whatever. So I like to think I've been uh, true to my word. And then uh, last year, the first year England beat us 18-14, and then last year we won 18-11. So this has been built as the decider now in January. And then as an extra bonus, uh, well for me anyway, uh, Jason has made me captain. So uh, he, to- he he texted me. He texted me last February that I fancy being the captain. And I, was, I just put me. Fo- I was actually playing the tournament in England. I just put, I just lost a match in a group, and I was a bit good. I put my phone on to ring home, whatever, and I just seen the message. And lo and behold, ten minutes later, I went in and had me first and only one four seven in the tournament. So, as we said, he feels he inspired at maximum. So, uh, but as I said, there's the four of us in the event. So, me being captain probably just means that you know I'll get introduced first. Um, was Ken was the captain the last two years. Um, you know, it's it's very much a joint effort. So it's more. Uh, it's still it's still a, a nice honor to ha- honor to have to be to be captain for me personally yeah, adds an extra little bit but uh, you know it's the first to eighteen so even as well as a player can only win six frames so it's very much a team event and I was actually there last year I actually met yourself in person at reception I kind of walked in and you were kind of down I was like this is un- this is incredible like because you know I've watched you for years and like. Uh, I grabbed Fergal for a quick picture there and I got the picture and stuff I was thrilled but 
it's a great event. Um, I'm not just saying it because I'm a snooker fan, but for anyone that you know likes to, you know, likes any sport in general, because golf is an, it's a really nice kind of um, place. It's kind of like how can I say? It? It's like a big, a big circle, and then you're looking down at the, the actual floor, the table is. It's a great feeling. There's a great atmosphere. I think, I think the, the banter between yourselves and Jimmy and and like even Jimmy White last year, the way he took that, it was it, very serious, you know. <laughs> It's 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 fantastic, but I must say it was a great day. We all got the autographs, um, the pictures, um, and you know I think it was a massive success. Jason was saying, but this year, um, no doubt it's going to be a bigger bigger success indeed, and we're looking forward to that. Fergal, just first of all, how did you get involved in snooker? We have to ask you that because Ken was telling us about the early days and the All Ireland days. Was it the kind of same route for you? Kind of watching it on the telly, or did you go a different path? No, no, no not the same. I said, but we're going to watch it on telly, and then for Christmas when I was uh, seven, I was given like a small little te- like t- just barely fit on, you know, on a kitchen table with little very small dolls and small cues. And then the following year, when I was eight for Christmas, my grandparents got me an eight by four table, which is, um, which for me then was huge. You know what I mean? So I literally was playing on that day and night for years. And I suppose when I was at 12, my dad started taking me to uh, some of the clubs in Dublin in uh, Fairview. And then from there, by about 14, I was starting to enter tournaments and 15, 16, travel around, playing junior events and traveling all around the country then. So I'd say by about 14, you know, that was, it was all I wanted to do. I said to stay in school until I was 18. Um, but you know, the, yeah, so the few years previously, it was one of the top amateurs. So nearly most weekends, there was tournaments. And then the following year, the, the game became open. It used to be just 128 professionals, but they opened the game up. So basically, if you paid £700, you could become a professional. So overnight, it was 600 professionals. But that, well, so you became a professional, obviously, to try and you know, get results. You went over there, and you could have maybe eight, nine matches to try and qualify for events. So it was very much doggy dog. So I lived over in Essex for a few years in the same in the same. Can and Eugene News was as well. And um, she so played the good practice with all very good players over there. A lot of tournaments. You know, every week there was tournaments. That just brought me game on and then started to make inroads in the rankings and that's so um it's been, it's been good so far. Definitely. And what kind of players would you look up to back in the day for was the likes of Jimmy White, Alex Higgins were the kind of guys that inspired you? Yeah, very much Alex Higgins when he won the world championships in nineteen eighty two. Um I was only ten, so I remember after he won I went upstairs and did out of an Alex Higgins poster and, you know, coloured it in myself and put it up in the wall. That was in the wall for years. <laughs> and then obviously as I got a little bit older and more into it, you kind of realised um, uh, that Steve Davis and then following on by Stephen Henry were the benchmark um, that they were winning they were winning and kept on winning in their professionalism and dedication. So uh, as you got a bit older and more profession, um, professional myself, you, you were trying to learn more off those, whereas Alex Higgins was sort of pretty much a one-off. Um, so those those players, Davis and Henry, were the two you were trying trying to emulate. And like they're they're fantastic players, but like for you, of course, would it be fair to say like your greatest achievement in snooker to date would be winning the British Open in '99? Yeah, absolutely. Um, to win a to win a ranking event, I think in the history of the game, I think only 55 players have ever won a ranking event. So um, so that's something to have. But obviously, I'll. Hope- Hopefully I can add to that. I said it's 99, so I'm long overdue. Um, so I'll keep battling away. Definitely. I remember watching the Masters in 2001. It came yeah. very close, very close. Of course, you beat Mark Williams, Ken, um, and Dave Harold on the way, and he lost in the final to the late Paul Hunter. Um, I think you had a nice little lead in that, but um, you came very close. But as they said, like if you look at the of Stuart Bingham, like he's he's gone on and won a world title. It's definitely in you, like you know. There's, is it? Do you think it's hard? Like as a fan, do you think it's hard to keep consistency in the game, or is it something that you can keep, but you just have to keep practicing because I think every everyone in any sport goes through, you know, like a bad week or a bad month. But for you, like you know, do you think it's something that it's it's it can be, you know, you can keep the consistency there, yeah. or is it just one of them things that's on the mind? Well, obviously, the mental side, particularly in snooker, is is massive because again, there's not much, uh, you know, it doesn't take you that much heavy physically. And you look at all the players, more or less all the players can play the same shots. Um, yeah. So it, it just very much comes down to on the day and the person who keeps their concentration uh, the best and also has the most probably confidence and belief. So yeah, over the course of a career, there are, there are ups and downs and periods where you're playing well and periods where you're not playing so well. And trying to you know uh, make the gap in between those um, not not too big so that you're trying to reach consistency you know more often. But you're always kind of aware of this by the nature of it. Sometimes you can play well and you're not even 100% sure why why you're playing well. And you can, yeah. have the very, you can have the very same preparation for the next tournament or two and get beaten first round. So, but I think as a snooker player, you're always looking, you're always, you're always hopeful and always a believer and you kind of feel 
you know, Stuart Bingham being a classic example that you feel if everything clicks um, for that week or two and the right week or two that you can win, you know, any tournament, and e- even the big ones and that. So um, that, that's what's always worked. Obviously, you'd like to be more con- consistent. Obviously, the more consistent you are, going to help you with regard to the rankings. But, you know, if if I lost every match all season but won the World Championship, so I'd buy your hand off. So, you know, <laughs> I, suppose, I suppose, like all players, you're, you're hoping... You're looking for one big tournament around the corner, and hopefully that's the next tournament. Definitely. Like you've had over 181 century breaks. Um, you've won a couple of tournaments. Like this has been like you've had the one ranking, two non ranking, and of course all the amateur stuff you won as well. Uh, like for you, what's been your greatest snooker match? Because you know we'd always ask snooker players, you know their favourite match. You've probably had a couple, but if you could pick one match in particular, what would be your most memorable match for you? Um, obviously we'd say we're winning, winning the final. Um, to win the British Open was obviously great, but the best match probably ever played, or probably high level, probably back in 19, as early as long as it was 1994. I, had a, uh, I was only 22, and I got a wild card tour at the Benson Hedges Irish Masters. Yeah. And after my first match, uh, I played Stephen Hendry in the quarterfinals, and Stephen Hendry was absolute top of the pops at the time. And I beat him 5 2, I had a couple of centuries, he had a century as well. I made the highest break of the tournament and played really, really well. So. That was to, like to, be pl- to get the chance to play in Goffs and, you know, in front of all my family and friends and to play Stephen Hendry and to play so well. That was fantastic. And, this, you know, sort of even the celebrations and the buzz after. And, you know, back then with the front front and back page of the papers the next morning because uh, I suppose knocking out the world champion at home was, was quite a big deal. So uh, great memories from that and uh, the excitement and obviously playing so well. Great. Um, and obviously then, whilst I lost, the, the Paul Hunt, Paul Hunter match is obviously uh, very memorable, and you know a lot of people remember that as well, obviously because um, it was so close. In fact, it was even seven three, but then Paul went on the rampage of four centuries and like six frames, and the last frame was two and fro, and I had chances. But um, and obviously then the fact that he won it and went on to win uh, another two before, um, like obviously he died when he was only twenty seven. Um, so there's been a lot of matches. So obviously they're always they're always sweeter when you win, but you know you can still be involved in the great match. Even if the result doesn't go your way. Of course. And just for, like, for, for all the young lads entering the snooker halls, even myself, because I'm still trying to give it a go. I'm 28 years of age, but I can still get the breaks of 40 and 50, which is, which is good for me. But what advice can you give to him, first of all, in regards to practice and how to, how to, you know, follow in the footsteps of yourself and Ken? What's the best advice you can give them? Um, well, for any player listening, regardless of age, without even seeing the player, say, if they stay down a second or two longer on the shot, They'd improve probably 10 or 20% straight away. Uh, you see most club players lifting their head. Of course, if you're lifting the head, obviously the cues, the cues being moved and not being delivered in a straight line. So that's a very quick tip for everybody. Um, then if you're a young, young player to just, you know, find, well, it's harder to find local clubs. So find the local club. Probably, if you're serious, try and get it, your own queue because, again, uh, as we all know, we're kids. Back in the day, going into the club and you'd find a nice queue you liked and you're trying to hide it somewhere in the club and you go back the next week and I wasn't there. So, if you're keen to play, you know, you don't have to spend absolute fortunes, you know, 80, 100 quid to get a nice queue as opposed to some of the rack queues. And then if you take, just play as much as you can, um, play a good bit on your own. Um, I suppose nowadays you can go on the likes of YouTube and see, you, know, you can pick up coach in that way. And um, and probably the best one is PJ Nolan, who's the national coach who I work with myself. If you went on his, um, uh, seen some of his stuff um, on YouTube, they give some great routines because they're very important, regardless of the level that there's a purpose to your practice as opposed to going to a club just smashing the balls and hitting them around. And um, it's important to be trying to improve and trying to have some purpose. And if then if you're showing a bit of interest and a bit of progress, well then try and find out a coach. Um, if there isn't one local, I said, yeah, PJ Nolan is the national coach. And then, then with the National Association, uh, RIBSA, Republic of Ireland Business Association, they've turned them from under 14 to under 21 to obviously senior events that I, I played through. So, and obviously then, if, in locally, they're trying to play in better players. Um, and then, and then it just really comes down to your desire and then your application and, um, and discipline and preparation. So, but I think it's very important. It's a shame. I think there's so many, because the last 10 or so years, so many clubs have closed down for various different yeah. reasons. There's a lot of young players now, 12, 14, 15 years of age, probably now you never even played snooker. So I advise them if they listen, look, give it a try and um, enjoy it. And then for those people, you meet a lot of people who say, oh, I used to play a lot of snooker and I used to watch it in the 80s and, and they really, really enjoyed it and for whatever reason got out of the habit. I'd advise them to go back 
and have a game again, you know, with their friends, and they realise, you know, how much what a good fun game it is. Yeah. And um, regardless of how you play, you get a, it's a bit like the golf side. You play one or two nice shots or one or two nice pots. That's generally enough to get you back. So it's like if you're if you're young and you've never played, go to the club, and if you haven't played in a while. Get back and try and re- rediscover the the joy we've all had of hitting, getting a nice pot. Definitely, Fergal, they're fantastic words, and we're all going to take that on board. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you in Gops um, in January, so January seventh and eighth. Uh, tickets are on Ticketmaster.ie. We hope it's, we hope we can bump into our reception again because we want more pictures. There's a big big group of us coming up from Cork again this year, so uh, we hope to see you around reception beforehand. I'm better looking in the flesh as well, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, as I said, for the people, for the people, I said last year was more or less sold out. I and mean, actually, even last year was slightly enforced at the All Ireland Club Championships were on in Killarney the same weekend. That's one of the biggest events in the amateur game in Ireland. That was on the same weekend, but it's, that isn't the case this year. So it's, I'd, I'd be very surprised if it's not sold out all four sessions both days. So book your tickets and book them early. And as I said, I think there's even VIP tickets where you can meet the players and um, before, before each afternoon session. And as I said, it's, it's, it's very, it's a, competitive exhibition you would say so whilst you've got eight players t- taking it very very seriously Ireland v England um, and also finishes in black ball games where all the players come out and the crowd really get involved plus you've John Virgum and Dennis Taylor doing the hosting so that's, it's not going to be too serious so if you're a man snooker fan there's enough snooker there to keep you really interested and if you're not that keen on snooker and you've just been taken along I said it's light hearted enough that you'd enjoy it as well you won't get, you won't get too bored or too much not wrong I really like John Virgo and Dennis said the last like the last time around that day I was in stitches from start to finish. It was like watching the BBC. It was quality. Yeah, quality. I have to say Dennis and John absolutely <laughs> fantastic, and they they they're commentating, but they're actually in the arena. Um, yeah, and passing comments and I said, the right next to the snooker table is great. Yeah, it was brilliant. Again, people were shouting as you always get, you know, in Ireland, people shouting out um, smart comments and that, and they were well able for that as well. So oh, it, was, yeah. it was great. It was, obviously, well, obviously I'd be biased, but it's a fantastic atmosphere, so um, hopefully hopefully people will come. Um, well, I'm pretty sure they will. It's more a question of book, booking their tickets early, so they won't be disappointed. <laughs> Definitely. Fergal, it's been an absolute honour speaking to you. We're very grateful for the chat, and uh, we'll see you in Goffs. We'll have all the links up on our YouTube pages and Facebook pages, and we'll tag you on them as well. So uh, thank you for taking the time to speak to us. Thanks very much, Sherry, and a 